So uh, the Echelon 1 study was a large international randomized study in newly diagnosed Hodgkin lymphoma patients stage 3 and stage 4, randomizing more than 1,300 patients to either standard ABVD chemotherapy or an experimental arm where bleomycin was replaced by brentuximab with dotin, so this is called A plus ABD. One-to-one -one randomization, primary endpoint modified progression-free survival, which was uh, assessed in the primary analysis at roughly two years of follow-up presented two and a half years ago. And what I am presenting at the EHA meeting is uh, an update at uh, five years of follow-up, both of efficacy and also significant uh, long-term toxicity data. So the primary analysis um, presented uh, more than two years ago showed a statistically significant uh, benefit in favor of the experimental arm when looking at the primary endpoint, which was modified progression-free survival. So this... Uh, Benefit is maintained. The five-year update contains an analysis of progression-free survival as assessed by the investigators at five years, showing a sustained um, uh, pro progression-free survival benefit, which is 82% uh, roughly in the experimental arm and 75% in the standard arm at five years. And it's important to know that in Hodgkin lymphoma, the vast majority of relapses or treatment failures have occurred within the first couple of years and certainly before five years follow-up. So a progression-free survival difference at five years means a difference in cure of these patients. Also, when looking at uh, safety, there are important findings, some of them uh, of novel character in this five-year update. First of all, there is a, a revisit of peripheral neuropathy, which is an important side effect of brentuximab and dotin, and so therefore something which is expected to be more prominent in the experimental arm than in the standard arm, and it certainly is. But the good news is that with continued follow-up, we see peripheral neuropathy continuing to improve and resolve patients in both treatment arms, and very few patients with ongoing peripheral neuropathy have neuropathy of uh, more than grade one or two. So very few patients live with severe neuropathy. Uh, most of the patients with ongoing neuropathy, and this is a group which is dropping in numbers, they live with grades of neuropathy that are um, something basically you can live with. Also, importantly, uh, looking at uh, secondary malignancies, there were no observable uh, difference in the rate of secondary malignancies 19 observed in the uh, experimental arm and 29 in the standard arm. And also there was a comparison of fertility uh, between the treatment arms and looking both at ongoing pregnancies and live births of uh, female patients or female partners and male patients, no observable difference between the treatment arms uh, here either. So this is very good news because of course, cure is not the only thing we treat patients who are often quite old, uh, young with Hodgkin lymphoma, they have many years to live with the late effects of treatment, including second malignancies, including cardiovascular disease and the risk of uh, affection of uh, fertility. And these problems are not, certainly not worse in the experimental arm than in the standard arm. In actual numbers, they actually look a bit better, but this is uh, not really, um, uh, these data do not really support a stringent statistical comparison. We can just observe the numbers and see that there, there is no meaningful difference. So um, the progression-free survival difference observed at five years is clinically meaningful. Uh, the difference between 75 and 82% progression-free survival at five years, that means a reduction in the risk of failing treatment by more than 30%. And this, uh, I, at least I consider clinically meaningful. 82% progression-free survival at five years may not be as high as the most intensive uh, strategies to treat first-line uh, newly diagnosed Hodgkin lymphoma. BACOP escalated yields progression-free survival in the high 80s, perhaps 87% at five, 10 years of follow-up. But rem remember that uh, in this study, patients up to the age of 83 were included, whereas the more intensive strategies to to treat advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma like BACOP escalated are not feasible for patients beyond the age of 60 or perhaps even 50 years. So 82% is certainly the best progression-free survival we've ever seen demonstrated uh, in, 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 in this kind of patient group. Um, A plus AVD, 
was approved for treatment of both stage three and stage four Hodgkin lymphoma in the US based on the Echelon 1 study and later in Europe, but only for stage four. And the reason for this was that um, subgroup analyses from the primary analysis of the study after two years of follow-up showed that the benefit in favor of the experimental arm was most prominent in patients with stage four rather than stage three. And also subgroup analyses showed that the benefit was more prominent in younger versus older patients. But with continued follow-up and with this five-year analysis, the subgroup analyses show uh, that this is really leveled out. We see the same uh, benefit in favor of the experimental arm across these different subgroups, including across both younger and older patients and both stage three and stage four disease. So while A plus AVD is already an approved uh, treatment for stage three and stage four Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, it is my hope that the uh, approval in Europe could be extended to include also uh, patients with stage three disease. Mm -hmm.